demonic spirits are just looking to inhabit somebody's life. That's why the devil wants you bound up. That's why he wants you messed up. But you got to shut the door to the enemy and you got to fill yourself up with God. You've got to fill yourself up with what he is speaking. We don't have time to play games because the devil sure ain't playing games with us. And he says that, that the only, uh, se for 70 years they were bound, but only 50,000 out of 2 to 3 million Jews go back to Jerusalem to rebuild it. Remember, that's the promised land. That's the city of God. That's the one that's lifted high. That's the one that God promised them. But they would rather live, even if it's in bondage, although not in bondage, they would rather stay there because it's comfortable. Can I tell you, sometimes God moves you out of your comfort zones. Sometimes, oh, this will preach right here. Sometimes God will make, make you uncomfortable. We love, I told the Lord the other day, I said, I love comfort, Lord. I feel like I live in a battle zone. I feel like I live in discomfort all the time. I want just some comfort, Lord. And he said, yes, I received that blessing. He said to me, he said, Andrew, I can't allow you to be too comfortable. Because I've called you to go from glory to glory to glory, from faith to faith to faith. That's why you feel the, the labor pains coming on because I'm calling you to birth something new on the earth. And he said, I, I, I've called you to be uncomfortable. And, and you know, I, driving home yesterday, it took us, I don't know, 10 hours. It was usually eight hours, but that weather hit. And by the time we were driving about Dalton, my back started hurting me. Y'all looking like that, that never happened. I was still, my, Brooke, I said, my back is hurting. I was like, I'm so ready to be there. I mean, I just feel like putting on the, the gas pedal and going as fast as I can. And I said, but I'm not because I don't want a ticket. <laughs> and I resisted. But uh, I, I said, my back hurts. And Brooke said, my back is hurting too. And then little Gabriel in the back seat speaks up and he goes, my back's hurting too. <laughs> and I said, well, why don't you lay down and relax? You can take a nap this whole time, and you've been up jibber-jabbering. <laughs> I sure, if I could take a nap, I'd be lounging out back there. I'd be sleeping. But, uh, no, Gabriel has definitely found his voice. <laughs> I told him the other day, I said, do you have a word quota? He said, what's a word quota? Do you have to say an amount, a certain amount of words every day? He goes, I like to talk. I said, you sure do. <laughs> Sometimes daddy likes silence, but that's okay. I'm so thankful you like to talk. But getting back to the word. They stayed in captivity even after encouraged to return to Jerusalem. And only 50,000 came back, and the word tells us, I'm summing all of this up very quickly, but it says, the ones that settled in, uh, uh, that went back to Jerusalem to rebuild, they were faced with great opposition, and whenever you're faced with great opposition, it will hinder what you're trying to do. And they were faced with great opposition, and it had wasted away. They had rebuilt the temple. However, the gates and the, 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 the wall was in disrepair. Now, it, it, a little history in ancient days about walls. Walls were protection from the enemy. Walls were important because gates were important. That's where they did business. That's where they uh, ruled on judicial matters was in the gate of a city or on the wall. That's where the higher ups would sit were on the wall of the city and they would rule the city. Are you all still with me? And so uh, if you did not have a wall or a border or a gate, then you were open for prime attack from the enemy. We've been hearing a lot about the border situation that we have in this country. 
and we've been saying, uh, we've heard time and time again that that uh, enemies are coming over that we don't really know who's coming over. And see, when you don't have that border of protection or those walls of protection, then you don't know when the enemy begins to invade. And that's where Jerusalem was. It was without a wall and without a gate. So the temple was up for prime uh, warfare for another nation to come against it. But God is saying it's time to rebuild walls. It's time to come out of reproach and rebuild the, the wall of the city of your life. And it says Nehemiah begins to be burdened. Now I'm going to sum some of this up for you in chapter 2. It's Go read it for yourself. But he begins to uh, go to the king. He was the cup bearer. That means that he would taste of the food or the wine uh, before the king to make sure there was no poison in it. He was risking his life. Now this tells you a lot about who God uses and promotes. He uses people that are faithful to their assignment. He uses people that are faithful and will lay down their life for another. Oh, this is heavy this morning. It's not all about me, 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 me. It's sometimes I will risk my life to help you. Hallelujah. Y'all are getting quiet on a Sunday morning. Y'all are, I, I feel like I'm at the church of the first reserve. We're getting out of this church in Jesus' name. Come on. We're going we're gonna to be lively and pull on that fire. But it, it says that, that he was a cupbearer. He was one who served. He was committed to the Persian king. And he said, but I have a burden for God's work and God's people. They're in reproach. And he says to the king, and the king says to him, he had favor with the king. And the king then says, I will send you with letters, with the seal, with my seal of approval. And when you walk into another area, you've got a letter from the king. I'm on assignment from the king of Persia. I've been given permission from the king of Persia. And he says, not only that, but I will give you the resources. I'll give you funding for your vision. I'll give you funding for what God has called you to do. Somebody needs to reach out and receive that right now. I'll receive funding for what God has called me to do. And the Bible says it's... Uh, the time frame was it had been a hundred years after the first Jews returned. So of our hundred years, they were without a wall or a gate or protection. Nothing but reproach and shame. And then Nehemiah in chapter 2, he goes with the seal of approval. Y'all go study it for yourself. It's a, a quick book that you can read through. But he goes with the seal of approval. He goes with the, the timber from the king's own personal uh, uh, forest. And he goes and he sends help. He goes and the Bible says that he uh, goes and let's skip on down to verse chapter 2. And I'm going to read to you real quickly what the Lord gave me. Let me pull it up here. Hallelujah. Okay, here we go. Number one, Nehemiah heard how God's people were, and he had a burden for God's work and God's people. Secondly, he began to pray. He said to God, remember your word. See, that's how you do warfare, church. You begin to say, remember what you promised me. The Bible says to put God in remembrance of his word. So if you're fighting a battle this morning, what you need to do is begin to pull out your prophecies. Come on, that's what Paul told Timothy. You war with your prophecies. What does that mean? You begin to say, God, you promised that I was coming out of debt. God, you promised that you were going to use me to the nations. God, you promised that... Come on, you begin to get you scriptures. You begin to stand on them. You begin to claim them. You begin to remind God of his word. And then he said he prayed to the God of heaven. Then he, he was answered, his prayer was answered with favor from the king. He surveyed the land. Now I want you to notice that because we like to skip over that part. We like to just get the promise. But the Bible says he went for three days and surveyed the land. Didn't tell anybody why he was there. What that means is he was counting the cost. He was saying, what's it going to take 
to rebuild these walls. Let me see how big this, this city is. Let me see how big the territory is. How am I going to get the people's help? What am I going to say to, to motivate them to come together in unity? Let me, let me understand. Sometimes we move forward without counting the cost. There's sometimes we say, oh, God's called me to do this. And maybe God has, but we haven't lined up to count the cost. We've got to count the cost. We've got to uh, survey the land. We've got to know what it's going to entail. I remember when my spiritual daughter Agnes began to start her ministry. I, I began to share with her certain things that she had to do in order to do that. Was I saying, uh, putting rules and lists on her? No, I was giving her wisdom of what I had received and saying, you need to make sure that you have right accounting. You need to make sure that you have the right 501c3. You need to make sure. Come on. And God has used her to touch nations. I thank God for her. If she's watching this morning, her and her precious husband, Pastor Karis, I love them to pieces. God bless them. But uh, it says that they go into the city and he surveys the land, but he doesn't say it to anybody. Sometimes your work will be hindered when you run your mouth too much. I'm just going to say it plainly. Uh, the Lord will, will allow your work to be hindered because you're going to the wrong person at the wrong time saying the wrong thing. But then the time came and he told them, verse 18, chapter 2, then I told them of the hand of God which was good upon me and also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Now notice this. That he told them about God's hand that was good upon them. And he calls them to say, let us, not let you. Not let you, Pastor Andrew, rise up and build. Let us rise up and build. I want to talk to you that are members in this house. It's time for us to build together. It's time for us. God needs your gift. He needs your talent. He needs your anointing. He needs your assignment. He needs your influence. He needs your word. Come on. No one person can do it on their own. It's going to take all of us. So this morning, I'm telling you that the hand of God is good upon this house, and he saying let us rise up and build remove the reproach of Chattanooga break the spirit of religion over this region and he says rise up and build revival reveal awakening rebuild the gates that have been burned down and he said to them let us and they said let us rise up and build now there's a lot of times I see people with a big vision but the People that are under and with them aren't really with them. Have you ever gone to a place and been with a person that really they're out for themselves? I've been that person before. I've had to repent. Not knowing I was that person. Thinking about, you know, how's this going to benefit me? Okay. I'll connect to that person and this will open up and. Y'all are looking spiritual like y'all never had that happen. But I know some of y'all have dealt with it because we're all flesh and blood. And we all think about our, we're built, we're built with a selfish mentality. We've got to crucify that thing. But it says, let us rise up and build. So he was a, had an anointing to build. And he began to gather the people. Then what happens? He begins to be mocked by the enemies of Israel. The people surrounding Israel did not want Jerusalem to be raised up. If you think that you're going to build without opposition, you're fooling yourself. Take it from someone who's been building for a lot of years now. Let me tell you, you will face opposition. You will face naysayers. You will face uh, struggles you never dreamed about. You will face things, unexpected things. Come on. When our air units went out, we didn't expect to have to spend almost $30,000 for air unit. But God made a way. 
come on, you'll face things. And even yesterday on the drive home, Pastor Brooke was getting texts and we were dealing with some things. And she was like, you know, uh, new beginners, they have no idea things that begin to happen when you begin to build. Come on, some of you are builders and you know what I'm talking about in this room. But that's why you, you have to expect that you're going to have opposition. And sometimes people see opposition as confirmation. That, well, that wasn't God. See, I remember when the roof fell in over here. And every time it rained, my prayer life shot through the roof. I mean, uh, that's probably why there was a hole over there. No, I'm just kidding. But, it, I mean, it shot through the roof. And, and those of y'all that were still here, y'all remember uh, me coming and all of us coming with shop vacs and trying to suck up the water before it ruined the carpet. And, and, and I remember one day one of my dear friend intercessors came and said, you know, so-and-so just got $10 million down the road. And you can't get a new roof. Are you sure God is in this? That was like a sword into my gut. I mean, that's, if you want to encourage somebody, don't. Don't encourage me like that. I'm just giving you fair warning right now. Don't, don't encourage me like that. Because that's not encouragement. And that's not, that's, uh, that's like putting a wound where there's already been struggle. But I, I, I remember so well, right over there by that pole, shoplifting water up. And, and when they left, come on, I didn't let them know. But when they left, I was like, God, are you not in this? Because all I've faced is struggle after struggle after struggle and this after that and this and that. And God says, sometimes, Andrew, the resistance is confirmation of my assignment on your life. Sometimes the devil's not going to sit back and say, just go for it. No, he said, I'm going to resist you in every area. Study the life of Paul. Study the life of anybody that's ever done anything for God. They resisted. But I'm telling you, God has given you victory. I'm prophesying to somebody this morning. You've been in the midst of struggle. You've faced opposition. You have faced resistance. But God is saying that is confirmation confirmation of my assignment on your life don't be discouraged don't be disheartened you keep on building they may be laughing but you keep on building they may be mocking you but you keep on building they may be saying come down off the wall but you keep saying I'm doing a good work I can't come down and fool with you I can't come down and mock with you I'm doing a good work I'm building something here I'm building my family. I'm building a church. I'm building a revival. I'm building a movement. Come on. We don't have time to, to, to give naysayers. There are, if you try to please everybody, you won't do anything. I learned a long time ago. When I, we first started the ministry, I remember uh, uh, people coming and saying, I don't like this, and I don't like that, and I don't like this. And that man, you're running around in circles trying to make everybody happy. I called it putting out little fires here and little fires there. And, and suddenly the Lord said, you just do you and let me deal with them. That's not to say that you don't uh, try to speak with, but you don't change yourself for anybody. God loves you. God's called you. And let me just say, that doesn't mean God's not working on us. God is changing us and working on us, but I'm talking about you don't change what God has called you to do because somebody doesn't like the color of the carpet. You don't change what God is. I, I, I've had so many examples of this. I remember someone, they were a big giver, met with us, took us to eat, and said, I love your church. I love your preaching. I love the music. I just don't believe in uh, speaking in tongues. So if you could just stop that, I could really, we'll sow a big seed. I'll never forget this. I remember where we were sitting in the restaurant. And I remember saying, I will never be ashamed of the Holy Ghost and the gift of the Spirit. You can keep your seed. And y'all know we really needed that seed right then. I, I, I mean, it was a time we really needed that seed. But I will never deny the power of the Holy Spirit. I will never shut down the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I don't care what amount of money. It could be tens of millions of dollars. It ain't worth it. Because tomorrow the economy could shift and that paper is worth nothing. 
Don't you sell out on God, but he's the one that carried me through everything. He's the one that prayer, prays a perfect faith-filled prayer. I'm sorry if the gifts offend you, but he has given us gifts of power, and they are for a generation. And I refuse to be ashamed of the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't change yourself. But, but they conspired. The word says they conspired against him. When that, uh, that's in verse 8. When that happened, actual war plans were made against the Jews, but they overcame it through prayer. They overcame the war plans of the enemy through prayer. I'm telling you, this last day church is going to be a praying church. God is raising up intercessors. God is raising up prophetic warriors. God is raising up those that will get on their face and begin to pray the perfect will of God. They'll begin to pray God's scripture. It's not going to be selfish prayers. Now, sometimes I love God that he cares about the big things and he cares about the little things. I was the other day I was praying. I said, God, I know you probably don't care about this. He convicted me immediately. He said, Andrew, everything that is on your heart, everything that's on your mind, I care about. He said, I can handle the big things and the little things. And so, uh, but prayer warriors are going to be raised up. And so they conspire with actual war pl plans. But in verse 9, it says, nevertheless, we made our prayer. And in other words, they say, we're not going to stop because you've conspired to take us out. And some of you are surrounded by the enemy, the reports of the enemy, the things of the enemy. He's conspired a war plan against you. You keep on praying. You keep on building. You keep on standing. You keep on believing. Come on. Nevertheless, we made our prayer. And then Sanballat repeatedly asked to meet Nehemiah. See, you got to be strategic in your meetings. Sometimes people just want to steal from your time. They want to distract you. They want to discourage you. So they keep saying, come down and meet with us. Come down. And Nehemiah, I love what, how, the way he answers them. He says, I'm doing a great work. I don't have time. See, if we understood the hour that we're in church, we would understand we don't have time to play religious games. We don't have time to say, well, they didn't look, smile at me the right way. I'm not coming back to church. I, I don't like that song they sang. I'm not coming back to church. I, I don't like that sermon that they preached. I'm not coming back to church. No, 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 no. We got to grow up. We got to grow past uh, saying, I'm going to meet with everybody. It's a distraction. You stay up on the wall, Nehemiah. You're doing what God is called you to do you're doing a great work why are you going to come down to try to meet with people that that only want to cause you disruption and only want to distract you the devil is a liar this is the hour for us to keep building this is the time for us to keep a hammer in our hands and for us to keep on building the wall because the reproach is being removed the shame is being lifted nehemiah 6 9 in the niv version I usually don't use the NIV version because they take out some scriptures, but I love how this read, reads. Nehemiah 6, 9 in the NIV says this. They were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work, and it will not be completed. But I prayed, now strengthen my hands. I love that scripture because Nehemiah didn't pray. God, give this burden to someone else. This is too hard. And man, that hit me in the gut. Because there's been times I've said, God, this is too hard. This is, this is too much. It's too hard. Nehemiah didn't pray, give it to somebody else. He didn't pray, this is too hard. for. No, he began to pray, God, let me see your will. God, strengthen my hands for this battle. I know I can do it with you, so strengthen my hands. My hands feel weak right now, but God, strengthen my hands so that I can see your deliverance, so I can see this wall built up, so I can see your people, your city, uh, the shame removed and the reproach removed. Strengthen my hands. He said, in other words, I'm not giving up, but I'm praying you give me a second wind we are ending the second half the first half of this year I am praying for a second wind to come upon his people I know some of you feel weak this morning some of you feel discouraged this morning some of you have been under attack but I'm here to tell you there is a second wind of the spirit of God and he is strengthening your hands
hands for such a time as this. It's not a time to give up. It's not a time to throw in the towel. It is the time to see the deliverance of God. It's the time for a second wind. It's the time for God to breathe on dead things. Mm. Just heard the Holy Spirit say, get ready. There's a wind blowing in this house this morning. Somebody needs to receive it. I know you feel dry. I know you feel barren. But there's resurrection life coming to you this morning in Jesus' name. Now, in Nehemiah 6, I know we've been all over it. Like I said, go study it for yourself. <clears throat> Nehemiah 6, two more scriptures. Are y'all still with me? Verse 15 says, so the wall was finished in the 20 and 5th day of the month of Elul, in 50 and 2 days. Did you get it right there? So the wall was finished in 50 and 2 days. So the wall was finished in 52 days. What others could not do in 100 years. Nehemiah did in 52 days. Some of you are looking saying it's going to take God 10 years. It's going to take God, you know, 20 years or 30 years. No, God's saying I can do it in 52 days. There is a supernatural anointing for building a Nehemiah anointing that is coming upon my people. And he's saying you're going to do quickly what took others a long time. You're going to see it suddenly. You're going to see it instantly. My God, are you hearing me? He's saying this is the time of sudden acceleration. This is the time of sudden movement. This is the time for the Nehemiahs to arise. This is the time for God to accelerate your anointing. I know you feel like you're behind track, but get ready. The reproach is being removed. The shame is being lifted. The chains are being broken. And acceleration is hitting your destiny this morning in the name of Jesus. He said what you could not do, what others could not do. And my timing, timing is critical. Did you hear me? Critical. You can do the right thing at a wrong time, and it can be disastrous. Talk to Moses. He tried to deliver the Egyptians and killed somebody. Then had to flee to the desert for 40 years. You can do the right thing at a wrong time, and it's disastrous. But when you hit the stride of the Spirit, and you do the right thing at the right time, God begins to breathe on it. And he begins to bless it. And there is a favor that you can't pay for. There is a blessing that you can't buy. There is a blessing that nobody can give you. Who am I here for this morning? I came to tell somebody there is a Nehemiah anointing being released on the body of Christ. He is saying, I'm raising up an army in this hour. The church of the living God. It doesn't mean just call out ones. It also means a legislative assembly it is a political term that says I'm a legislator He's, we've been looking to Washington Washington is not the answer the church of the living God is the answer we are the answer to legislate heaven to earth what we permit on this earth we are going to have to answer to God for why because we've been given authority oh doesn't that just step on your toes right there the Lord spoke to me the other day and said, Andrew, why are you permitting that? And I said, God, I, I'm preaching. He said, begin to pray and say, I refuse that. I refuse that spirit. I refuse. I don't permit it in my city. I don't permit it in my church. I don't permit it in this nation. He said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. He's waiting for a church to rise up with a voice. The church is finding her voice. The church is going to speak up. What happens when the church is quiet? The world runs rapid. But I'm telling you, when the church begins to speak up and we begin to say, no, we're not okay with the Olympics mocking Jesus. No, we're not okay with drag queens dressing up like Jesus. We're not going to be desensitized. The devil is a liar. I will speak up and let my voice be heard and say not in my nation, not in this generation. My children will not permit that. When will the church speak up and use her voice? I'm telling you the church has a mighty voice. 
Because the kingdom of God backs it up. See, when the church begins to speak the word of the Lord, he releases angels. All of heaven begins to back up the word of God. So why are we sitting defenseless? Why are we sitting among the reproach and the shame saying, well, it was good in the 50s. Or it was good in the 80s. You know, they respected the church. No, it's time for the church to rise up and say, we won't tolerate this. We won't, we, we, we won't, we we're going to speak up and say what is what. We're not going to tolerate our children. I have two children, and I refuse to allow my children to think it is normal. It is not. It's a spirit. We have to speak up, and if we don't, their blood is on our hands because we know truth. The world's just being the world. They don't know truth. They're blinded to it, but we know truth. What happens when the church is silent? What happens when the walls lay in ruin? Reproach, shame, and what happens? When a Nehemiah anointing comes upon the church and they say, let us rise up and build. Then they remove the reproach and they strengthen the wall. And they're no longer a reproach to the nations of the world. One more scripture. And it says this. So the wall was completed. In verse 16, and it came to pass that when all of our enemies heard thereof, And all the heathen that were about us saw these things. Listen to this. They were much cast down in their own eyes. For they perceived that this was a work. This work was wrought of God. Can I tell you today, God is going to show your enemies. You're coming into a season where people stand back and say, that has to be God. I don't know how that, that, God's hand is on them. I don't know what, I don't know how they did that. That's impossible. I don't know how it shifted for them. Their economy shifted in one day. I don't know how that happened. They're going to stand back and your enemies are going to be dismayed because God's hand is upon your life. I'm prophesying to somebody in this room. God is going to shut the mouths of your enemy. He's going to shut down the gossip about you he's going to shut those that have ran their mouth against you God is going to deal with them and they're going to stand back and say this was the hand of God God did this for them are you ready for a shift like that I'm ready for a shift like that. I'm ready for God to step in and step up and say this is over this is complete and I'm vindicating that's what I hear him saying I am vindicating my people in this hour I'm removing the shame. I'm removing the reproach. Every head bowed this morning. Lord, I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice, those watching by live stream. Lord, I thank you this morning that you are lifting the reproach and that a Nehemiah anointing is coming upon your people. An anointing for acceleration. An anointing for accelerated building. I thank you, Lord, that you are raising up some cupbearers. You're raising up some servants. You're raising up some ones that were unexpected. Why? Because they have the burden. Why? Because they have the word of the Lord. I thank you, Lord. Those that are here today, they didn't just stumble in. No, you sent them by divine assignment because you're saying to them, this is your time. Stay on the wall. Keep building for God. Don't let the enemy talk you out of what God has promised you. I know he's been lying to you. I know he's sent feelings. See, uh, the enemy can send feelings to us. Well, I feel rejected and I I feel hurt, and I I feel this, and I feel... No, the enemy can send you feelings. God can use feelings, but the enemy can send you feelings. That's why you got to have discernment. Don't move by feeling. Walk by faith and not by sight. God, I thank you this morning for every person under the sound of my voice. 
that an accelerated building anointing is coming upon your people. I thank you you're building lives. You're building marriages. You're building ministries. You're building callings. You're building open doors. You're building economy. Come on. You're doing it this morning. In Jesus' name. I break every assignment from hell. I break every lying tongue that is spoken against you. I just keep hearing the Lord saying there's been mouths that have come against you, words that have come against you. And God's saying those words are falling to the ground. Those words are breaking over your life. They are not what God has spoken over you. He said, my word will defend you. It will. His word will defend you. It will defend your children. It will defend your grandchildren. Come on. God said, I'm fighting your battles for you and your house. He's saying, watch what I will do. And I will show those words to be in the wrong. Somebody's getting vindication this morning. Yeah. Somebody's getting vindication. God is moving even right now. I, I prophesied at the beginning of the service, by this time tomorrow, uh, you, I, when we were giving, I hear the Lord saying, by this time tomorrow, even as, as you leave the service, some of you are going to receive vindication. You're going to receive that call of apology. You're going to receive that text that says, I'm sorry, I was wrong. God is, remember, the person is not your enemy. The spirit, a spirit, and even God's people can be used with a spirit. He says, the spirit, your real enemy, is the enemy, the devil, is the enemy. They're only puppets in the hand of your enemy. So, Lord, we forgive people. We forgive people that have wronged us. We forgive people that have spoken against us. And, God, we release them into your hands. And I thank you this morning for that spirit and anointing of acceleration. Do it quickly, Lord. Coming upon us now in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen.